People believe the real roller coaster is found in amusement parks, but if you really want to experience highs and lows, look no further than SpaceX's Starship launch schedule. Following this program is like riding a rocket of emotions, because just when you think the launch is about to happen, something unexpected pops up. There's always uncertainty. Sometimes SpaceX says the launch could happen the next day, and everyone gets excited, only for the launch to get pushed back by weeks. Other times they stay silent, and suddenly the rocket lifts off out of nowhere. That's just how it goes with Starship. It's still in development, still learning, still changing. And that means nothing is guaranteed until the engines are lit and the rocket actually leaves the ground. Right now, we're in one of those moments again. It's a bit disappointing, but Starship Flight 9 is not launching this week. Musk had hinted that it might happen soon. He even dropped one of his usual vague tweets saying, Flight next week. But things didn't go as planned. Once again, we're reminded that rocket development isn't a straight road. It's full of delays, last-minute changes, and technical surprises. At the same time, Ship 35 is still at the launch pad. It hasn't been moved or rolled back, which usually means it's going through final pre-launch checks. Engineers are busy finishing up several key steps. One of those is installing the payload, which refers to the test cargo the rocket will carry during flight. In this case, the payload isn't an operational satellite or real cargo. It's mostly test mass or hardware meant to simulate real payloads so SpaceX can gather data on how well Starship handles deployment procedures. This helps SpaceX get ready for future missions where they'll be carrying real satellites, lunar landers, or even astronauts. Another system being finalized is the Flight Termination System, or FTS. This is a required safety feature on all rockets in the U.S. It's basically a system that can destroy the rocket mid-air if it goes off course or something goes seriously wrong during flight. The FAA mandates this for any orbital or suborbital launch, especially when launching near populated areas or busy air and sea routes. The FTS is one of the last things installed before launch because it must remain in perfect condition right up to liftoff. Even though Ship 35 is on the pad and Booster 14 was already brought out once before being rolled back, both parts of the rocket are still in the preparation phase. It's clear now that even if SpaceX manages to move everything back to the pad in the next few days, a full launch won't happen this week. But there's a growing sense that they are aiming for something more concrete very soon. We do have some strong signs pointing to a new possible launch window. The FAA, which handles flight safety and airspace regulation in the U.S., issued a notice to airmen. This is a public alert that informs pilots about restricted airspace due to rocket activity. These notices are usually sent out a few days before launch and cover a specific window when the airspace will be closed. At the same time, the U.S. Coast Guard released a local notice warning ships to stay clear of certain areas in the Gulf of Mexico. This is done to prevent boats from being in the splashdown zone for the booster or near any potential debris field. These two alerts are key signs that a launch is getting close. This time, both point to May 27th as the first possible launch day. But there's a complication. May 26th is Memorial Day, a federal holiday in the United States. On this day, many government operations pause, including support teams that help manage restricted airspace and coordinate emergency services. This matters because for a launch like this to happen, a lot of agencies need to be on standby. Air traffic control, Coast Guard units, recovery ships, safety observers, and more. If they're off duty for the holiday, the launch can't happen. So, if SpaceX doesn't manage to launch before the 26th, they will have to wait until after the holiday to proceed. That pushes the most realistic launch date to the 27th or a few days later. Thankfully, the FAA notices show that the current launch window remains open until June 2nd, giving SpaceX about a full week to work with. A launch window is a set of dates and times approved by authorities when the rocket is allowed to launch. It takes into account weather, orbital trajectories, air and sea traffic, and coordination with international partners if needed. For example, if Starship is aiming to test a particular orbit or fly over certain regions, the timing must be precise. 
A missed window doesn't just mean a delay by hours, it could mean rescheduling by days or weeks. So right now, the best case scenario is a launch on May 27th. But delays are still possible depending on how fast SpaceX can fix whatever caused the Booster 14 rollback, complete the final work on Ship 35, and coordinate with federal agencies like the FAA and the Coast Guard. A launch around May 30th seems like a strong possibility, especially if they want to avoid rushing anything and ensure everything is double-checked. Once both stages are back on the pad and the launch countdown begins, SpaceX will move into the fueling phase. This is one of the most critical parts of the pre-launch timeline. They'll start by loading cryogenic fuel into Ship 35, beginning with liquid oxygen, followed by methane. These super-cold propellants are essential for the Raptor engines to function. A few minutes later, the same fueling process will begin for Booster 14. After the tanks are fully loaded, the next step is to cool the engines themselves. This is called engine chill-down, and it prevents damage when the engines are fired. The timing for each of these steps is precise and follows a strict sequence. So even if everything looks ready from the outside, a lot still needs to happen behind the scenes before liftoff is possible. About 30 seconds before liftoff, the flight director does one last check. Then, a water system under the launch pad turns on. This system sprays water to protect the ground equipment from the extreme heat of the engines. Then comes the big moment. All 33 Raptor engines on Booster 14 fire up. These engines create over 7,000 tons of thrust. That's enough to lift the giant rocket into the sky. Many of these engines have flown before, so this is also a big test of SpaceX's plan to reuse engines. After about one minute, the rocket reaches max Q. This is the point of the flight when air pressure is highest on the rocket. It's a big test for the structure of the rocket. If it passes max Q, that means the rocket is strong enough to handle the worst part of the atmosphere. At around two and a half minutes into the flight, most of the engines on the booster shut off. Only three stay on to keep it steady. Then Ship 35 lights its engines. At the same time, the two stages separate. This is done with something called hot staging. That means the upper stage lights its engines while still attached, and the force pushes it away from the booster. This is a newer method SpaceX is testing. Now the two parts go in different directions. Ship 35 keeps flying higher. Its job is to reach space and do a test with the payload. Meanwhile, Booster 14 will try to come back. Just 13 seconds after separating, the booster lights some of its engines again. This is called the boost back burn. It helps the booster slow down and turn around to head back toward Earth. That burn lasts about 45 seconds. Then it shuts off and enters a free fall for about three minutes. During this fall, the booster gets rid of the hot staging ring to lose extra weight. Then, at about six and a half minutes into the flight, it starts the landing burn. Thirteen engines fire to slow it down. As it gets closer to the water, most engines shut off, and only three keep running to help guide the booster for a soft water landing. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.